welcome back to the full star Inc. channel for another video how's everyone doing happy summer summer is only a week away but it's summer it is hot how are you guys doing today i am so excited because i'm back with another video i'm not gonna get the explanation of what's been going on where i've been we're just gonna skip past all that because i'm so excited for today's video because it is another tutorial and it is so cute i really really loved how this one turned out and it was so super easy it literally took me a day maybe not literally a day it maybe took me like six eight hours and like consecutively I, I completed it within a day time frame so i'm really excited i hope you're excited too so let's get into it this dress was fully inspired by all the all that has been happening in the fashion world right now with the rise of the baby doll dress and the trampeze dress I, I really was inspired by this dress from Eloquii as well as this beautiful, oh, the color is dynamic. Um, but both colors, I love both colors, are dynamic from um, Christopher Rogers um, for in collaboration with Target. Really, really was inspired by the shape and look of the dress. And I've always wanted a baby doll dress. I thought I, would, I thought I'd be really cute and adorable pulling off a baby doll's look. So I really wanted to create my own. So the dress that I have here became like a hybrid of the two. So let's get into the details, the materials, and what we're gonna need. So I really, really love, I picked up this hot pink cotton lawn a few months ago from fabric.com i had intended to make something else with it a shirt um, out of a pattern but you guys know how pattern pieces have been treating me lately so i really really something i really really wanted something that i made to wear to this pop-up event that i'm going to um on june 20th here in chicago i will leave that information in the screen as well as in the description box i really wanted something to wear to like that was like cute and simple but like a statement piece like oh my god i love that where did you get it and I, I get to say oh thank you i made it <laughs> here's my business card you know so anywho this hot pink lawn was calling my name it was beautiful it was light it was airy i loved the color and i knew i was going to be comfortable with it and i knew i wanted to create a baby doll dress or a trampeze dress that would be perfect to match the silhouette and shape of it the only concern I, the only concern i had was that i didn't have enough i only had three yards and I used every bit of three yards in this um, tutorial. So starting off, I knew I wanted to do a, uh, a simple neckline. I didn't want to do what I don't like about the Eloquy dress and the Christopher Rogers dress is Christopher John Rogers. What I don't like about the traditional trampeze dress is how it is cut straight across the bust line, the neckline. Those are not really my favorite type of um, garments to wear dresses that cut could like straight across to have a straight neckline so i wanted to add a little bit of curve and personality to it i knew i did not want this dress fitted so measuring and cutting was very meticulous and luckily about this um cotton lawn that it comes it has like a grip like texture pattern woven into it so i was able to measure out exactly and then cut along the lines instead of having to go back and forth and measure i just measured up to the point and cut that line out up and down across so i was able to get exact measurements so i wanted to play with the neckline do it kind of like a hard neckline as well as i really really wanted the tie effect the bow effects on the sleeves Next, I knew I wanted to a full gather skirt to give me a nice flow and twirl. I wanted to twirl and flow into the event and be seen from miles away. And I really, really um, would like to do a ruffle hem. So, um, I took my, before I um, went any further, before I cut anything, I made sure to take my, I made sure to take my measurements. I have gained quite a few, um, I have gained some weights and some inches being in quarantine, but you know what? It's okay. We're coming out of quarantine together. We're coming out of this thing together. And so I needed to take my measurement so that I could get an accurate measurement of what everything I needed. So the first measurement I took was my bust. Um, I took my bust, divided that by half, so that'll be my front and my back, and added four to give me a little room because I knew I didn't want it fitted. Next thing I took was my bodice height my bust bodice height so from where my cleat would start down to where i like to have my dresses hit which is um in between my breast and my belly button um it's just me is the top of my stomach when my first row starts 
So I took my measurement there. And then I added two inches to that. Um, added it like an inch and a half for seam allowance. Next, so I took my waist um, and then add, I took my waist and added five inches to that. Next, I took how long I wanted the skirt. And I like my skirts start at around about 27, 28 if I'm doing like a mini length. So I measured that into like a 29. And the next thing, I took the ruffle length at the ruffle at the bottom, which was going to be 10 inches in height. Hello from VoiceOver Nadia. First, I began by laying out my fabric with salvage as meetings with the length of the fabric so that I gave myself enough room and yardage to cut this material so I made the most out of it. Beginning with my top, I measured 10 inches down from the salvage edge, which would be the length of my bust. And then I measured um, 28, 28 inches long, which would be half of my circumference of my bust. So again, those measurements, I measured my entire circumference of my bust, divided that in half, and then added four inches to that. So that gave me roughly about 28 inches. I did the same thing for the front and the back piece. I followed along the grid lines that this fabric, this plaid um, fabric had, which really helped me with keeping my cuts nice and accurate. Lastly, from this panel section, I cut out what I needed for my straps, which measured about 42 inches long. I will come back later and tell you how wide I made my straps. So this is just the fabric folded on the fold that I cut for my straps. So I took the liberty to go ahead and cut out four pieces for my pocket. This is a pattern that I made um, last year. With the remaining of the fabric, I folded that again in half, salvage as meetings, and then I cut that right down the middle and that will be the two panels I need for my front and the back for the skirt. Going in with the bodice piece, the front bodice piece I am measuring where my arm holds would be because this is a strapless I still want to give curvature to the arms so I measured about four inches in and then I measured about three and a half inches down and I cut that on the diagonal and then I did the same um, technique with the front but I only did an inch in and about three inches down um, for the front to give no I think one inch in, two inches down for the front to give myself a nice little V curve situation. I took that first piece, folded it in half, and lined it up with the back piece and did a less um, drastic um, diagonal cut with the back piece. So back to the straps. The straps were a bit wide, so I cut that, I cut these strips in half. And then I folded it over and it gave me about um, I believe this was about four inches. So I folded that in half again, cut that down the middle. And so that when I was done cutting, I had two inch wide strap. So beginning with the sewing, I went in here and right sides together, I cut two panels of the bodice piece. And so that I am now just sewing those two panels together so that I can go and turn that inside out, press that for later. I did the same thing with the strap, sewing the straps together. Turning the straps right side out, I went through a tedious process with this. Here you can see me here testing out my new iron. I got this cute 
for the mini steam iron and I'm just testing it out on the fabric and making sure that you know it doesn't burn and I have it on the right setting I go ahead and press all of my sewn pieces so that's my straps so they are nice and flat and easy to attach and then that's my front bodice piece and then my back bodice piece So I forgot to insert my strap so you can see me here marking from the center over to the side. I noticed that my bra straps are 13 inches apart so I measured from my center to, I measured from the center over 7 inches and from one side to the right and then my center over to the left 7 inches and that is where I put my straps. And then I repeated the same process on the back. I went ahead, inserted that back into the bodice piece and the back piece and closed it all up together with a top stitch. Once everything was top stitched, pressed and laid flat, I put the front and the back pieces together, right sides together, and I sewed down those side seams. Once I sewed down the side seams, I went ahead and did a long stitch gathering my skirts and I pulled the thread and gathered them until about the length of my front and back bodice piece. You can see me here just pinning those together with the bodice piece um, sandwich in between. And before I went ahead and attached that, I did that off camera because you guys have seen me attach a top and a skirt before. I am going here and I am pinning down my pockets. So I pinned those down with the wrong side of the fabric facing up and I pinned down the pockets so that when I sew them down, it's just a straight stitch and then I'm going to fold it over to um, hide away the raw edge of the pocket and the raw edge of the skirt so that I give myself a nice little clean finish fold. And then once I have my pockets attached, I am going to now sew up the side seams of my skirt going all the way from the top of the skirt around the pocket and back down the side seams till you get to the hem and once I've done all that I am now going to finish off the hem of my skirt and with that stylers you are done Oh my goodness, Alice, that was so cute. I wanted to come back and do a wrap up. I just got done twirling in the streets and I have to say I've outdone myself. This dress was indeed cute and simple. It was really easy. It took me less than a day to create. And I feel like it's just gonna be a simple one. So I wanted to do a little bit of a recap, a summary, wrapping things up and how that, all that jazz. So some of the things I noticed when creating this dress is one, you notice I didn't get the ruffle hem that I wanted. I just had enough material for the rest of the skirt after I cut out the top and the straps. And also I forgot halfway through, like almost finished, like 95% is finished last night. I remembered I forgot to cut fabric for a face mask. I really, really wanted a matching face mask with this dress because I thought it was just going to be so cute with the matching mask and the dress just to really make a powerful hit and punch with the individuals that come into contact with my booth on next Saturday. Um, a few things that I would like to note. My ties are a little bit tight, too, too big, too long. Um, that could have been fixed and remedied if I would have cut fabric for my mask. And you can also cut those a little shorter if you want. 
I do want to go in on a later date and add a, a clasp on the tie so that when I bring them together, they actually clasp and then I tie them into a bow. Well, I tie them into the bow and then I clasp them together right at that meeting point. Um, I'm going to put them on me, tie them, and measure where that meeting point is so that I can have a firm, secure tie every time. Status. I absolutely love this dress. It is my favorite. I've already decided that I want more in like every color. I will be ordering some more cotton lawn very soon. The fabric wasn't as difficult to work with. It does fray like crazy, so you do have to keep a close check on it. But I definitely want to work with this material again. It was fun, it was easy and simple, and I definitely want more in at least three, four other colors to wear all summer and carry into the fall. I really love how this came out and having the sheer um, underlay, having the sheer skirt can really help with making it a more um, customizable, billable piece. You can wear shorts underneath it and when the fall comes, you can put on jeans or leggings. Absolutely love this. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I look forward to the next video and hearing you guys comment. Stay encouraged, stay inspired. Remember that you are loved and worthy to be loved, but always remember to love yourself fully. Until next time, stylists. Mm-hmm.